Hey guys, Steve here, and it's time to start a new Pokemon series. I'm hoping to provide you with similar content to famous YouTubers such as JRose11, Ma Drybread, Scott's Thoughts, and Van Man. My challenge runs will be using Gen 1 Blue version with Pokemon selected at random from the end of my previous video. The rules being quite similar to the other YouTubers, I'll only be allowed to use one Pokemon. The other Pokemon will be used for HM purposes only. No glitches or exploits except for the badge boost glitch, and no items used within battle. The format will be of a speedrun type format, like JRose 11 or Van Man, where I rank the Pokemon based on my experience. I will need to note that despite doing it in a speedrun format, I am not a speedrunner, nor am I even as good as the other YouTubers previously named. I will do my best, but I will make plenty of move mistakes based on lack of exact typing and defense knowledge. I will get better over time, but please be kind. You may see familiar things from my channel that you recognize from other channels. Please note that this is out of a term of endearment to those other channels. I'm not trying to copy them, and I will do my best to make sure that I do a new bit on my own. I am writing this script after the run, but still try and guess if I am able to complete the run or not. I will still post runs that I am unable to complete, even at level 100. This video's Pokemon is going to be Alakazam. I know the run will probably be easy, but I have tested the challenge out a few times to make sure that I can challenge myself. Alakazam is an incredibly fast, psychic, special attacker, as you can see in the bottom left. However, it is kind of a glass canning, having pretty relatively low HP and defense compared to other stats. But in Gen 1, special is used for both attack and defense so he's actually quite good at taking a hit from special moves. In Gen 1, critical hits are actually calculated on your speed, and his base speed is 120, which puts him at a 23.44% chance of critically hitting. Without further ado, it's time to start off the game. First off, we're going to start by grabbing our level 5 Alakazam and replacing Charmander with the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to make sure a rival has a bulky Blastoise as well as an Executor, which is quite a pain for a psychic Pokemon. I gave it the nickname Spoons because who watched the anime and didn't think Alakazam's line, bending the spoons, wasn't awesome? We start off our rival 1 battle with two confusions and the Squirtle goes down just like that. First thing I do before Brock is battle rival one and a half, and just a few confusions later, he goes down. We make our way to Brock. On the way there, I fight the optional bug catchers, and then against Brock's junior trainer, the Diglett survives one confusion, but then goes down to the next. And then the Sandshrew goes down to the next confusion. For Brock, the Geodude surprisingly survives a confusion, and the Onyx also takes two confusions as well. At this point, Alakazam is not nearly as good as ever remembered. We make our way to the Mart and sell TM34 Bide and buy 11 Pokeballs for the upcoming Pidgey in Paris I'm hoping to catch. After entering Mount Moon, I make sure to grab the rare candy and escape rope. On my way through Mount Moon, I reach the fossil section, heads for Helix and tails for Dome. I made sure to grab the... Helix Fossil! I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, Debate in the chat section if I used a real coin or not to make the decision on which fossil to take. Once we arrive in Cerulean City, I decide that since Starmie is part psychic type, we should fight the rival first. I grab the rare candy, and then take on the rival. The first Pokemon out is Pidgeotto, and the first confusion doesn't take it out. But luckily, I'm not hit with a sand attack, it goes down on the second confusion. Next up is Abra, and it can't hit me, so it goes down in two confusions as well. Next up is Rattata, and it goes down in one confusion, and that brings me up to Squirtle. Squirtle takes a confusion, and it goes down in one critical hit! On the way to Bill, I grab the hidden elixir, and I made way my way down to grab Dig from the rocket, and then fight Misty. This is one of those mistakes I mentioned at the start, because I forgot to fight Misty before the rocket, and ended up having to make my way and walk through the entire town twice. I make the decision to fight the trainers in the gym first to obtain Psybeam before the leader battle to increase my odds of winning. First up is Staryu, and it goes down in one Psybeam. Next up is Starmie, and as I suspected, it takes a Psybeam like a champ, only taking a little under a third. And I take Starmie's strongest attack, a Bubble Beam, and take a measly 12 damage. 
This is that exceptional special I was talking about earlier at the start. Starmie then tanks another three Psybeams before finally going down. For the first time in my entire life, I went directly the SS Ann. I thought about battling some of the trainers for the extra XP, but decided against it because I wanted to keep the run challenging and just fight the two trainers in the rare candy room, then go directly to Rival 3. First up is a Pidgeotto, and this time it goes down to one confusion. I don't think the crit mattered this time since we are much higher of a level. Next up is Raticate, and it goes down to one dig. Then we have Kadabra, and it goes down to one dig thanks to its terrible defense. Last up is Wartortle, and it goes down to one Psybeam. Crazy to think that I one shot swept his whole team without a super effective move. Next up, we sell the Pokeballs, Nugget, and TM11 Bubble Beam to free up inventory space. Then buy 5 repels to get us through Dark Cave. Up next is Surge, and the Volporb goes down in one confusion. Then comes up the decision to learn Recover, and I mistakenly teach it over confusion instead of Teleport. But at the time, I thought I might actually end up using Teleport to save some time later. Pikachu goes down to one Psybeam, and now Raichu is up. Raichu tanks one Psybeam, and then retaliates with a useless growl. We finish it off with another Psybeam, and we're on our way with the badge. This is where I use a tip I picked up on another channel, where you can pick up the bike voucher, and then dig out of the building. Since I haven't healed up since Cerulean, I was able to save a load of walking time back to the city. Nothing of note takes place in Dark Cave, and we head out to Celadon City. Before we arrive, we take a pit stop to grab an elixir in the underground path. Once I arrive in Celadon, I head to the Mart and buy 15 Super Repels for the rest of the game, sell TM24 Thunderbolt, and buy one fresh water from the vending machine. I don't anticipate needing Mimic, so I don't buy a Poke Doll, and I don't need Ice Beam or Rock Slide, so I don't buy any more drinks from the machine. I make my way to grab Fly, before I forget like my last practice run, and make my way to Erica. Since I just healed up at the Poke Center, I make sure to fight all the easy trainers in the gym to get a few extra levels to reduce the difficulty of the mid game. When I finally get to Erica, Victory Bell is first, and it goes down to a single Psychic. Tangela and Vileplume follow closely behind for the easiest badge of the run. I make my way to grab the PP up on the east side of the city, Make my way to the game corner where I buy a bunch of goodies along the way before getting to Giovanni including another PP up, rare candy, HP up, and iron. Now at this point, we are quite a bit over level. For reference, J Rose was only at level 31 to our 40 at this point. But don't worry, his game will catch up to us quite quickly. Giovanni is nothing special, just another one shot sweep and pick up our self scope. Rival 4, as you imagine, at this point is a joke, and everything goes down in one hit. On my way to the top, I make sure to grab the elixir directly to the left of the staircase, then at the bottom of the room for the HP up, and on the next floor directly south is another elixir. Lastly, there's an unavoidable rare candy. Now, it's on to Marowak, which goes down to a single psychic, and a few grunts later, we have ourselves the Pokey Flute. After flying to Celadon, it dawned on me that I forgot to pick up the bike. I made sure to grab the bike voucher, but not the bike! Another minor mistake that costs a lot of time. Things I'll most likely remember in future runs. Now, with the bike in hand, we face Snorlax, and a single Psychic doesn't finish it off. No problem, I just finish it off another one, right? No. Being the idiot that I am, I thought I would save up on PP and use another attack. But... It just so happened to be Dig, and what, Snor what did Snorlax use? That's right, Rest. So that took a lot longer than expected. Before we get to Fuchsia, I make sure to grab the rare candy in the grass on the way there. On to Koga's Gym, and the trainers are quite the minor inconvenience. I don't bother to heal after the trainers, and it didn't dawn on me that I am low on PP, and that this could end up being a problem knowing how trolly he can be. The battle starts, and we one shot his coughing. Thank god we one shot the muck. We should be able to one shot the next coughing. However, if I don't one shot the wheezing, I could easily be taken out by an explosion. Luckily I left one power point for Dig, and that's all I needed because he indeed does self destruct, and we win the battle. Close one. Now with the soul badge in hand, we head off to the safari zone and get surf. 
The rainbow badge from Erica allows us to use strength. So when we get Lapras and Sylphco momentarily, we can immediately teach both to use. Not much to talk about in the Safari Zone. We use our repels and pick up the Carbos, Protein, Double Team, Teeth, and Surf. In Sylphco, I head directly to the fifth floor and grab the Elixir on the way to the key. Then head up and grab the Protein on our way to the tenth floor. Grab the Carbos and Red Candy before fighting rival Fival, as J Rose calls him. Out first is Pidgeot, which should go down to a single Psychic, but first hits us with a massive critical hit quick attack. Next up is Growlithe, which goes down to a single dig thanks to its fire typing. Execute in prior testing took more damage from Psychic than dig, despite its own Psychic typing. Alakazam surprisingly doesn't go down to a single dig and an 11 level advantage. It does go down to a second, but this is surprising. Last up is Blastoise, which I expect to be quite the challenge, but instead it goes down to a single critical hit Psychic. Not sure if I should narrate the Giovanni fight, Nidorino, Kangaskhan, Rhyhorn, Nidoqueen all go down to one Psychic. I escape rope to Future City to grab Strength and teach both Surf and Strength the Lapras and make our way down to the Pokemon Mansion. Pokemon Mansion goes relatively smoothly. Use some repels, grab the calcium on the second floor, iron on the third, all to the first floor, grab the carbos, make our way to the basement, grab the two rare candies, the key, and make our way to Blaine. On the way to Blaine, I decided to battle all the optional trainers, because I had realized that I was skipping most of the trainers after Erica, and wanted to put myself in a good spot going into the final stretch. Now, before Blaine, I forget to heal and restore my PP, so I'm going into the fight with only 5 Psychics and 3 Digs, so I decide to save the Digs for Rapidash and Arcanine. As expected, the Growlithe and Ponyta go down to 1 Psychic each. We get to the real challenge. We go for a Dig, and Blaine uses one of his famous full HP Super Potions, and Spoons comes out of his hole and gets a critical for the one shot. Not sure if it mattered. Arcanine is next, and I am quite sure I will need both digs, but if I get hit with a takedown, I could be done for. I go for the dig, and Blaine once again uses his famous Roar, which does nothing in Gen 1 for trainer battles. As expected, the dig doesn't finish it off, and gets off a rather weak Fire Blast, and we just use one of our psychics since he's at low health. I immediately head to Sabrina and give it a go. Do I remember the path for her? Whoa! First try. First up is the Kadabra, and I just go right for Dig, knowing its defense is terrible. Next up is Mr. Mime, which could have used Reflect, but I took the chance it wouldn't, and it didn't. But it does unfortunately not take it out. Stupid Me goes for another Dig, when Psychic would have done it for sure. Venomoth goes down to a single Psychic, and we're on our way to the powerhouse that is Alakazam. I start off with a dig, and it unfortunately doesn't finish it off, and did a decent bit of damage, where another dig should definitely finish it off, right? Well, I guess not, because for some reason, all the Alakazam does is spam recover over and over again. And I realized this at some point, and switched my strategy to going for Psychics to try and get that special drop, or a crit. I eventually get a crit and finish her off. I dispose of the two trainers from Giovanni and head to him after a quick heal. Giovanni starts off with a Rhyhorn and quick Psychic takes it out along with the rest of the team. What could I say? Was there a doubt that this would happen? Oddly enough, I wasn't able to dig out of the gym or escape rope, so I skipped healing and went straight to Rival 6. Pidgeot and Rhyhorn go down to a single Psychic and Gralic goes down to dig. Now, with Execute, we get hit with a Stun Spore, which we know is very bad since it's a glass cannon and we hate going second. Now, we get hit with a Leech Seed and we know we are in for a slog with the rest of this battle. This Alakazam battle goes from bad to worse when the Alakazam, after one dig, uses Reflect and we just keep getting paralyzed and then he heals up with Recover. From this point, I know we had lost, but I held on hope that we could find a way out of this nightmare paralyzed. Leech Seed, Confuse Loop, we were in. 
Somehow I managed through sheer force of will and throwing every move I could muster at that Alakazam. It does go down and bring up the Blastoise. But with my PP depleted and all those status conditions, I just couldn't manage to string together enough attacks to take down the bulky Blastoise. Despite knowing PP could end up being a problem again, I head straight into the battle and get to the same point. But this time, Execute finds itself being taken down with a lucky critical hit. I go onto the Blastoise without any status conditions. However, this time, Alakazam gets its reflect off before landing the first dig and just doesn't take very much damage. The rival, unlike Sabrina, will actually attack me, so it eventually goes down to enough psychics. Next up is Blastoise, and Blastoise goes down after just two psychics. I Blastoise because I knew it had the best chance for this run ender, and even though it wasn't able to do it without the aid of status conditions, it was able to do it in the long run. Not much to say about Victory Road, I made sure to pick up the rare candy and get through all of the boulder puzzles. First up is Loralee, and I know this is going to be a challenge because my level matches her dugong. This is the lowest level of any run I've made it before this one. We start with a psychic, and it takes a small amount of damage from dugong, and then finish it off the next turn. Cloyster is more of the same, but I don't know if this crit mattered or not. I know Slowbro will be bulky, and I wanted to test out Dig to see its effectiveness. It wasn't very effective, so I just continued on with Psychics till it went down. After seeing how little Dig did to Slowbro, I don't bother trying with Jinx and regret it, then go for Dig immediately afterwards. I'm quite shocked at just how strong this Jinx is. And after that critical thrash, I'm going to be a bit worried when it comes to this Lapras. I'd start off the Lapras with a Psychic, and it looks to be doing about half. And yes, a clutch Hydro Pump miss. This should be an easy KO. Oh my god, it lands at a sliver. Perfect. A retroactive super potion. Close one. Another Psychic takes us to Bruno, and I think this one should be easy thanks to my practice runs. One. Two. Three, four, five, that he's out of here! I know J. Rose uses the count, and I was hoping to maybe do a baseball count, or possibly a boxing count. I'll try things out and see if they stick. Speaking of counting, Agatha goes much of the same way. One, two, three, four, five, and she's out of here! With that, we're on our way to the ever scary Lance. I start off with a Reflect, because I know that in Gen 1, all normal moves are physical, and I need the extra defense. As expected, he does go for a Hyper Beam, and I use the next turn to test out how much damage my Psychic will do. Nice! We got a special drop, but I won't need it the next turn. Dragonair surprisingly goes down in one hit, and so does the next one. I'm worried because Aerodactyl is three levels higher than me, and most likely faster. Surprisingly, I went first. Yes! Crit! I'm pretty sure that mattered. Last is Dragonite, and I know that Spoons can be taken out by a single Hyper Beam. It happened a few times in my practice runs at a higher level with more HP. My first Psychic appears to be doing about half, and the deciding moment? Slam! Well, Dragonite is down, and we're on to the champ. I really didn't expect to make it this far on my first try, but I've already lost to the champ once, and I'm not that much higher of a level this time. Pidgeot is out, and we start with a Psychic, and this time, it's not a one-hit KO. Luckily, it goes for a wing attack, and next up is the ever-scary Alakazam. I start off with the Dig, but again, he predicts it and uses a Reflect to reduce the damage to a very small amount. Alakazam retaliates with a Psychic, and I get a special drop. I'm afraid that this could be a run ender right here, but I power through. We're in a Harry Potter-like duel of the Psychics and Recovers until I am inevitably able to take it out. But now I'm worried about my PP for the rest of the battle. I know Rhydon can't do much to me, so I start off with a Recover before taking it down with Psychic. Wait a second. My special is so low that I can't take Rhydon out in a single hit? This is worse than I thought. I try out a dig to save up on Psychic PP, but it surprisingly isn't enough to take it out either, and finish it off with another dig. RK9 is out, and this should be simple, with dig, since Arcanine is actually weak to dig. 
Not only does it survive one dig, but it survives two. Luckily for us, he takes himself out with a single psychic, not before taking me down to 24 HP. As Executor comes out, I decide that I need every psychic I can muster for Blastoise and go with the really ineffective dig and recovery strategy. Unfortunately, it's just not enough and I run out of PP and I must go with a reset, even without going down. In the future, I plan on saving between Elite Four members because I believe my skill level needs to improve before I can take on a J Rose like challenge. But for now, I will start all the way back over Laurelie again. From the past, I know that Dugong will go down at two psychics. Next is Cloister, and as I suspected, the crit did matter earlier, and it goes down at two psychics as well. And we didn't take the damage thanks to the Super Potion. Armed with that knowledge of the first run, I just start with a Psychic on Slowbro and spam it till it goes down. Same thing with the Jinx. I do believe that Dig does do more damage, and I stick with that. But she manages to land a critical hit Ice Punch on me, and now I'm in the same situation as last time going to Lapras. Two body slams later, and we go down once again. Looks like we aren't going to luck out like last time, and need to be a higher level going into Lapras. I decide not to use my rare candies since I know the run is doable and go straight into the next attempt with Lorelei. Our next run starts with two more psychics to Dukong. As Cloyster comes up, we manage to land another lucky critical hit on it and next up is Slowbro. Three psychics later and we are on to Jinx and hopefully things go a bit smoother because this time we have a badge boost glitch and maybe she won't crit with Thrash or Ice Punch this time. We start off with Psychic, and it appears it will still be a 3-hit KO, despite the badge boost glitch. She retaliates with another body slam, and I really hope that I don't get paralyzed. Luckily, we don't, and I go in for another Psychic, and even a crit doesn't manage to take it out. Our fear is realized when we take another critical hit Ice Punch, and left with 58 HP for Lapras. We go for our first Psychic and manage to get a special drop, and we needed that too, because it looks like her HP is significantly more than half. She retaliates with a body slam, and moment of truth. No! We take Paralysis, and we're going second from now on. I guess it's time to take another approach into this fight, when suddenly the unthinkable happened. She misses a blizzard, and, gets and we get off our Psychic and get the win. That was way too close. I really hope the rest of the run goes well, because I do not want to have to fight her again. Next up is Bruno, and it's a sweep once again. Same with Agatha, and we make our way to Lance once again. We once again start with a Reflect to weaken the upcoming Hyper Beam. Oddly enough, he goes for Hydra Pump, and we're nearly taking as much damage as with Hyper Beam. But now, we don't have the Recharge turn to use our first Psychic. Luckily, we landed the crit, and we're on our way to Dragonair. First one is out, and I'm expecting a one-shot sweep of the two, and it appears that it's actually a range. The second goes down no problem. Aerodactyl comes out, and we go Psychic again, and it lives! Oh my god, it was also a range! We're learning a lot this time through, but Aerodactyl goes down to the next Psychic, but not before leaving us with 87 HP. Next up is Dragonite, and we hit it with our first Psychic to put it in a KO range. It retaliates with, oh no, Hyper Beam! Yes! 29 HP left, and we get the KO. I guess in the previous playthroughs when I lost, they must have been critical hit Hyper Beams. Next up is the return of the champ. Bigeot comes out, and I decide to start with Reflect this time, anticipating the barrage from Executor, and Pidgeot's moves are all physical too. I then go for the Psychic and do a bit more than last time. Maybe the badge boost glitch works with Reflect too. Let me know in the comments. We take a decent amount of damage from the Sky Attack and finish it off with the Psychic. Next up is Alakazam, and I start off with a Dig just like last time. But this time, it doesn't start with Reflect. So, we deal massive damage and even get the crit as well. We take the Psychic and this time, no special drop. This is looking good. Alakazam goes down to another Spoon Psychic, and this takes us to Rhydon, which is a nice target to heal against, so I do just that. We manage to get a one-shot this time, and I think the special drop is worse than I thought it was. Arcanine comes out, and we get our two digs to end it. Alright, the rematch we've all been waiting for. 
Executor Tor is the real challenge here, and we start off with a Psychic and manage to get the special drop right away. After I see this, it's full speed ahead, and I don't bother saving PP with Dig, since the Alakazam fight went so well this time. Alright, will the hand-picked Blastoise be able to stop us once again, and send us to the dreaded Lorelei once again? We start off with one Psychic, and crit! Game over. Wow. Turns out crits are the way to victory. Who knew? We finished the game at level 59 with a 344 game time and three resets. Being the best Pokemon next to Mewtwo, this has got to be the gold standard. And will be the first Pokemon on my rating list at an A+. Unlike Van Man, my list won't be based on time. I am not good enough at planning my runs well enough in advance or know all the typings just yet. Mine will be more like J-Rose, where I include the level and the time, but I will also include the resets. But this will be on the lower end of consideration, because it's a little bit more luck-based. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, at the end of the video, I would select that Pokemon for the next video. And that Pokemon is... Butterfree! Thank you very much for watching the video. If you like this video and have any suggestions for me, please let me know in the comments section. I'd like to try and get these videos out every two weeks until I can get into a rhythm and go once a week. I'd like to thank all the YouTubers who came before me and inspired me to start following my own passion for solo runs. This was Steve M. Plays, and I'll see you in two weeks.